Hi, my name is Joel Rubin, and I teach astronomy at Stoughton High School, where on the first day of class, students make Uncle Al star wheel. But I ask you, why don't we see the planets on the star wheel? And you've all seen drawings like the one I have on the screen representing the solar system. Is this an accurate model? There's another one, of course, uh, you may have heard about Earth as peppercorn. Well, the moon is uh, 2.4 inches away from the peppercorn, a pinhead, representing 100,000 miles every inch. Uh, we have the sun, an eight inch basketball, and we walk all the way across the fields to have the distance between the sun and Saturn in scale. Saturn is an acorn. Well, here's another model that you may have heard of, Copernicus, uh, the first person to uh, show that there was a relationship between the 30 years it takes Saturn to get back to the same part of the sky again, the 12 years it takes Jupiter, the year it takes Earth, and so forth. It's because of their distance from the sun that they're going around that illuminates them, he says. The first step for my students is to go to Google Classroom and to add or create a doc and a sheet. And then uh, they have to put this template into their doc. Then uh, they could take a look at some resources like the uh, notes that kids and IEPs need to have access to, right? And uh, then that includes uh, these diagrams, right? Uh, this diagram here in the upper left is the one that Copernicus actually used. It involves basically thousands of calculations to figure these things out. The kids can do the same thing with just uh, five calculations, one for each planet. For the inner planets, it's pretty much the same as Copernicus did. Uh, he waits till the angle is as far as it's going to get between the sun and the planet, and uh, that angle he takes the sign of it, and because there's a tangent line here to the orbit, as you can kind of see in this uh, image here, a model of the same thing. Because that's a tangent, he knows this is a right angle. And so he's able to do his trig. Not so easy though with the uh, inner planets, the outer planets, sorry. The outer planets, uh, he does have some information that he could have used, but he doesn't actually use it. He knew how many degrees per day each of the planets went, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, and he could look at the positions uh, between uh, opposition when the planet is uh, as far uh, away from the sun as it ever gets in the sky. In other words, the planet's rising as the sun is setting, the planet's in the sky all night. No parallax, very useful. Uh, there's another position many days later when the planet seems to be at a right angle to the position of the sun as seen from Earth, but you need another angle to do trig, either this one here or that one there, and those are unknown. How do you figure them out? Well, the uh, method that was used by uh, Thomas Kuhn and other people at Harvard back in the 1950s and 60s was uh, this one. Uh, count the number of degrees per day between uh, the position uh, where they were in a straight line and the position with the right angle and uh, compare how far the planet moved to how far Earth moved and the angle of the sun would be uh, subtracting the shorter distance the planet had gone from the further distance Earth on the inside track had gone and then you could do one over the cosine of that and you'll get the answer. That's not what Copernicus did though. Why would we want to know um, how far the different uh, planets are from the sun? Well, it, you know, if you're studying exoplanets today, uh, it makes a great difference to the climate if you're closer to the star or further from the star you're orbiting around, right? So that's kind of where we're at with this. Um, Copernicus understood some things correctly that the reason why plants appear to go backwards is because 
planets are passing Earth or vice versa, not because they're on loop-de-loops, but he still needed the loop-de-loops because he didn't accept the idea that planets were going faster when they were close to the sun and slower when they were further from the sun. That had to wait until Kepler came along. So uh, we don't do it exactly the same way as Copernicus. He used epic cycles to account for this uh, anomaly that the planets speeded up and slowed down. He believed that they kept going at constant speed on their circles. Uh, but uh, these are important things that we relate from Copernicus to astronomers today, that the orbital periods are related to the distances from the sun, that the planets are worlds seen from far away, not tiny points of light, and that Earth is a moving planet just seen up close. And uh, that's uh, some reasons why it would be good to bring our students to an understanding of Copernicus, besides which, of course, spreadsheet functions are really useful for students to know here in the 21st century. So that's uh, my presentation for now. If you want to get a hold of me, I'm j underscore r-u-b-i-n at stotonschools.org. Nice talking with you.